how much do we really know about space? This magnitude has allowed many aspects to go unknown since humans first left Earth and experienced life outside our planet. Astronauts have ventured where very few have been, but some of them have come out and spoke about some of the interesting things they witness while in space. Now it's important to note that NASA have said they've never seen or captured a UFO, and that every UFO witnessed in space can be explained as space debris or camera anomalies. But it seems that some astronauts would disagree with this statement, as some have come forward in detail with their strange encounters that led them to believe that something more mysterious was going on. One of these individuals that came forward even though he was advised not to was that of Edgar Mitchell. Edgar Mitchell was the sixth person to walk on the moon's surface. He piloted the Apollo 14 lunar module, the first Apollo mission attempting to carry out scientific experiments on the moon. The crew spent nine hours working in the Fram Mora Highlands region. Despite being one of the lucky few to have experienced the wonders of spaceflight, Mitchell may be known more prominently among the space community due to his outspoken theories on UFOs and alien life. Mitchell grew up in America among the space race, a mere teenager when the suspected Roswell UFO crash occurred in 1947. Mitchell himself did not live far from the site of the infamous crash. He went on to say the following about Roswell. The truth about it is that it's real. I was there when the Roswell incident took place. I was on my way to college and just graduated high school. One day it was in the Roswell Daily Record, which was a newspaper in Roswell, about an alien spacecraft that had crashed, and the next day that it had been denied by the Air Force, saying that it was a weather balloon. Many years later, after I'd been to the moon and came back, I went to Roswell to give lectures, talks and meet people I knew since I was a kid. Many of the people I knew, along with descendants of the people who have been involved in the Roswell crash, told me their stories. He claimed to have talked with the son of an undertaker who said his father provided small coffins to the military and was told not to tell anyone about it. He pursued a military career joining the US Navy as a pilot in 1948 and was selected by NASA in 1966 to become an astronaut. However, it was towards the end of Mitchell's career and after his retirement that he became the focus of discussion about the potentially paranormal events that occurred out in space and those that he himself had experienced. It was during the Apollo 14 mission unbeknownst to the world that things began to get a little wood with Edgar Mitchell. After experiencing what he described as a spirit above the creator, Mitchell became ever more interested in the paranormal phenomenon and consciousness. He began to conduct ESP experiments, experimenting with psychic abilities such as telepathy on board the Apollo 14 module. Chillingly, Mitchell's experience did seem to have an effect on him. He and a group of psychics later alleged that he shared mental communications whilst he was in orbit. He later founded the Institute of Noetic Sciences, which continued the experiments he had been conducting in private and in space. During his lifetime, Mitchell consistently testified to the existence of UFOs. In 1966, in an interview on the American TV program Dateline, Mitchell stated that UFO contact is very strong, and that the US government was covering up alien visits and UFO crashes. The subject of UFOs in space isn't slowing down either. In fact, there's many that believe these unidentified flying objects can be seen when looking at the International Space Station. The International Space Station is a large spacecraft that can be found in orbit around our planet. Over the years, astronauts have called this place home. It also serves as a science laboratory where various experiments are being carried out. The station was the work of various countries, and since being placed in space, many nations have sent their astronauts to stay on board, and incredibly, many parts of it were assembled in space by the astronauts themselves. It's not as deep in space as some people might think though. It orbits our planet at an altitude of approximately 250 miles. There's various international space station cameras that give the public a chance to look out into the cosmos. 
However, every so often someone manages to record something that they can't explain. Some of the most commonly shaped UFOs that are seen on the cameras include that of the triangle and disc. This caused UFO researchers to spend countless hours watching their live cams in the hopes of finding something, and in some cases amateur researchers have discovered strange objects off into the distance, which is then followed by the cameras mysteriously being shut off. Going back a top official of a secret government program whose task it was to investigate UFO sightings, came forward with some bold claims. They told several media outlets that extraterrestrial life may exist. They further said that millions of dollars has been put into the research of exotic technologies affiliated with unidentified aerial phenomena. These headlines caught the attention of many around the world, as for many years people have been coming forward with their encounters with mysterious lights in the sky. Some have said if you're going to believe any reports of UFOs, you might as well trust those coming from the men who have actually been to space. The list of those who have made claims of sightings includes Edgar Mitchell as we just mentioned, Caddy Coleman and Dr. Brian O'Leary. Buzz Aldrin has also spoke of his own experience while on board the Apollo 11, when they saw something flying alongside them. At first they thought it was the final stage of the detached rocket, until Mission Control confirmed it was 6,000 miles away from them. Former NASA astronaut Dr. Brian O'Leary said the following, There is abundant evidence that we're being contacted, that civilizations have been visiting us for a very long time, that their appearance is bizarre from any kind of traditional materialistic Western point of view, that these visitors use the technology of consciousness. They use toroids, they use co-rotating magnetic discs for their propulsion systems. This seemed to be a common denominator of the UFO phenomenon. End quote. The ancient world has fascinated us for years. There are many artifacts that have been discovered though that have caused us to question what they depict. One interesting artifact that is said to show advanced technology is that of the Babylonian Cylinder Seal. Theorists have said this seal is proof of advanced weaponry. It's important to note that skeptics and scientists have said this isn't what it depicts, but amateur researchers have said we can learn a lot about the past by looking at ancient tanks. Those who've seen the seals have said it looks like a nuclear bomb and an explosion. Some have used examples like this to prove that ancient humans had advanced technology. As with the majority of these findings, they're up for debate. Believers have said this seal is similar to the ones found in Egypt, that allegedly show Egyptians using advanced technology. One user said the following, Going back thousands of years ago, the only way humans could detail the past was in writings. Perhaps we shouldn't take everything so literal but this seal does look like a bomb going off. It doesn't mean that's what's happening here, but it does certainly make for an interesting conversation. Across many civilizations we see similar looking depictions, and you can't help but wonder what they were trying to detail. End quote. As of right now you have ancient theorists that believe this is evidence of humans destroying themselves and saying that every 100,000 years or so civilization starts over, further saying that we've been looking at our ancient history wrong, and one of the reasons why ancient humans were able to achieve what they did is because they had the tank. Skeptics though say this isn't what's being depicted, and say that ancient theorists always take things too literal. One interesting civilization that's been at the center of many mysteries is that of the Sumerians, the ancient Sumerian civilization is regarded as perhaps one of the oldest civilizations of humanity, and could very well have been among one of the first. Despite their significance in history of civilization, not much is known about their civilizations and cultures in the modern day, with many of their artifacts and their ancient cities completely lost to time. Many of the oldest recovered documents and tablets in the world come from the ancient Sumerian accounts, which makes it not at all surprising that so many witness accounts exist from this time, that go into vast detail of the mythologies and religion of the ancient Sumerians. 
one most notable encounter in the modern day being their self-proclaimed encounter with the gods of their times. The ancient Sumerian gods were depicted as being large intelligent beings, that looked similar to man but with the capability of flying through the skies on large metal dragons, that would breathe out fire as they ascended. In fact, the name of these gods referred to as the Anunnaki, and their translation of the word quite literally means the people from the stars. This has led many modern day UFO groups to suggest that these Anunnaki were nothing more than advanced extraterrestrial life, that had made early contact with the human race, and helped them evolve past their Stone Age evolution. Additionally, given the fact that the world's first civilizations are traced back to the ancient Sumerian civilization, this has provided more support for the theory that the advancements with the human race worked hand in hand with that of the encounters with these people from the stars. This has led many to wonder who or what the Anunnaki were, and any scriptures surrounding such beings to be studied religiously, in the hopes of uncovering more evidence for this ancient alien hypothesis, and the development of the human race during this time. The DNA of the Sumerians For the longest time, one of the biggest mysteries surrounding that of the ancient Sumerian people had nothing to do with its civilization culture or any one of its incredible levels of developments, but rather that of the genetic lineage of the people, their origin and the discovery of any possible modern day descendants, that could be studied further to help us better understand that of the ancient Sumerian civilization and their people. Due to a number of different writings, there also appear to be numerous claims from ancient alien researchers that believe that the modern day descendants of the ancient Sumerian civilization could help shed proof into that of the ancient alien theory of genetic manipulation with the help of the Anunnaki, the supposed gods that had come from the stars. Researchers believe that if the modern day descendants could be found and their DNA could be tested, there would have been irrefutable proof that their DNA had been manipulated by their gods. In the event to promote the human evolution, and possibly provide answers for the ancestral missing link, leading many to spearhead this campaign in the hopes of gathering evidence of extraterrestrial intervention. However, the problem with this campaign is that the ancient Sumerian civilization was reportedly wiped out thousands of years ago, before the dawn of the ancient Babylonian society leading many to believe that perhaps the people of the ancient Sumerian civilization had all perished. Luckily for humanity and researchers alike, a number of researchers finally tracked down a group of people in the modern day that are believed to hold the genetic code of the ancient Sumerian people. After archaeologists located the preserved body of an ancient Sumerian prophet that was believed to survive a massive flood referred to as Noah, Researchers were able to gather DNA from the teeth of the individual, and use it to trace any modern day descendants. This led to researchers uncovering the last known descendants of the ancient Sumerians in the modern day, and these were that of the Marsh Arabs, that lived secluded from the rest of the world in the marshlands of Arabia. When further testing was done, they proved to be a conclusive match to the ancient Sumerians, leading many to make strange connections with the modern day society and that of the ancient Sumerian civilization. The most peculiar comparison was that the ancient Sumerians held the belief that the world had been destroyed by a massive flood, and that their people came from a family that had survived the catastrophe and had mastered the ability to live on the seas. Interestingly, the Marsh Arabs appear to be master boatmen, as well as forming several houses and villages floating on the waters of the marshlands. So what do you make of these interesting ancient depictions? And do you think these texts show us events that played out in the past? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.